Hi. Hi. What are you doing? Well, I'm actually setting up these hearts for my forthcoming pop-up love shop. What is that? Well, I've been collecting these hearts for years. And I've decided that I must do something with them. So I've been upcycling, reinventing, redesigning, and uh, adding something to every single one of these hearts to make them new. And then I'm going to sell them. And I'm going to sell them for charity. When my daughter died, and this was 20 years ago now, we donated her heart. And that means today her heart is beating in a young man's body. And it was a very difficult decision to make, but consequently hearts have been very symbolic for me throughout since her death since her death. And I've been gathering hearts and now is the time to pass them on, bring some uh, more love into the world, spread the word a bit and uh, do something useful. There we go. So I've quite a collection here. I mean, just for example, this one's been made out of tea bags. Yeah, just, just what you always wanted. Eh? Well, it keeps me going. It keeps me going being creative. Can you tell me some about other materials you use? Oh, I, I use everything. I'm a mixed media artist, so that means I basically use whatever is at my disposal. Uh, what I particularly like doing is finding old things and reinventing them. We are such a consumer society. We throw stuff away so easily. And I just like this whole concept of reusing what's already there to recreate art, to make something beautiful. Do you want to see my uh, gallery? Yes. Or my art studio, more to Good. the point. It's a bit of a mess, but... Uh... I got a beautiful garden here. I do have, unfortunately, it's coming to the end of the season now and everything's dying, but then that's what life's all about, isn't it? Life yes. and death. And if we live with these principles, then I believe it helps us to live life more to the full. So, welcome to the life of Liz. <laughs> Again, this is all stuff for my pop-up shop on Saturday. Uh, although I'll be doing other pop-up shops as well. I've decided that it's quite a good way of utilising my uh, desire for picking up old unwanted objects and doing stuff with them. So these ones is uh, old bits of jewellery that I, I'm a collector, you see. <laughs> and I, I've just made a... Yeah, and she's been all decorated up. They've all had something done to them. This little one here is a little glass bird. I mean, so sweet. I love them. I, I do I get a lot of joy from it all. You might think I'm a bit of a nutter. But... <laughs> and these, these bowls, old bowls, thrown away. So yeah. I've uh, recovered them and uh, made them nice. There's another one over there. That's, uh, I'm particularly pleased with those. Then the signs. You see, I also get things from... Um, uh, I buy things new, but they're usually in the sale. Their prices have gone right down. And then I get them and I paint over them. Like these. Add, add it a little bit, yeah. Yeah, these were, had something like. Well, these, are just, these are just plain uh, signs with love on them. Yeah, but the, underneath yeah. they've got something else and no one had brought them, so they, the these price. Are more low into it. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah so. <laughs> and the, the little houses here yeah, with yeah. A, sort of, I add this bit to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I come good. from the old hippie area. I guess <laughs> that has shaped something yeah. of my life too, mm. you know. I've never had a lot of money, so using, using um, second-hand things has always been part of my life, and mm. I've incorporated that into my art. Oh, yeah. look, let me show you something. What sort of woman or person does this with eggs? <laughs> what am I going to do with it? <laughs> yeah, maybe one day I'll just yeah. smash them all and that will be an artwork. Yeah. My uh, artistic... 
uh, ability came really into being after the death of my daughter. I oh. used art as a means of dealing with grief. I mean, but just think, of when we talk about me with, with my daughter, but today in the world there's, there's parents all over the place who are losing their children in wars. And uh, the refugees are... Uh, I mean, it's, it's a hard times we are living in, and I really think we need more love. When I'm working, I'm working in this space, which I call flow. So I'm into a space where I know that what I'm doing is valuable. I know that, I feel it deep within me. It's When people see it, as to what they make of it, I don't know. But all I can say is that I make things from the baseline of trying to bring some sort of joy, some sort of um, this recycling, uh, this understanding, this uh, 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 working from the heart, hands and heart. And I've been doing this for years, years and years. Uh, some some say that uh, when we are evolving our feelings and emotions, then our values are changing. I think so. I think this is so. I think we cannot. But how is when you when you are working with this all the time, then you do have uh, an open heart. You are more compassionate to others less fortunate to, than yourselves than ourselves, than myself, yeah? And you use some spades and some other tools? Yeah, you use it, like this one, for example, yeah. is a kitchen, something you yeah. use in the kitchen. The other day, I was reinventing this little mirror and it had here a proper candle holder, which I didn't like, and I thought, what can I use there? And voila, we have these little things, voila. <laughs> da, 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 and so... Uh, I like the word reinventing. Yeah, reinventing, it's a great one. <laughs> yeah. I think it's what we do a lot, actually, in our lives. We reinvent, we reinvent ourselves. But I think we have to do it a bit consciously. This is, and perhaps this is lacking somewhat in today's uh, consumerized society. Yeah. Well, as I said, it first started, really started, I started getting into random cutting and sticking, which is the basis of most of my work today. Uh, I was using this medium, sticky back plastic. So you cut it up and stick it and, and it comes in huge great rolls yeah. and I went round and gathered it from fabrics that were factories that were throwing it away. When in those times of serious grieving and going crazy in losing my dearly beloved daughter, I found this means of um, just cutting and sticking and may putting together just randomly or sometimes, as you can see, with, with in a style. It was really took me into another place, another dimension. And without realising it, I was going into a flow state. And this flow state, there's been lots written about it. I had no idea about it at the time when I, my, uh, I was involved in it. I just did it, and it really helped me. I'd start doing something, I'd get depressed, start doing something, two hours later, I'd be out of the depression and I'd have something um, to show for it as, uh, as such. Not that, that, that the show it, having something to show for it was the main point. It's just being able to survive. Grief is such a, uh, a, a painful and eating experience and I don't think that we in this Western society know how to grieve uh, properly or, or to the full extent that we need to and uh, just um, apart from actually getting into the weeping the crying the anger and all of that actually doing something constructive with our hands and focusing on the, the love that we had for that person <laughs> And putting it into a different way of uh, of being is um, it, it just saved my life. I think really saved my life. I say that. So this is probably the smallest gallery in the world. 
what to do with it, you see. You make it. Well, I can make it, make it easily, but then moving it forwards is something, is something different. Artists and marketing don't go particularly well together. One point in time, I will be, uh, my work will be appreciated for what it is. I need to be busy all the time. I need to use art. If I don't do my art, I, I go a bit cranky. It, it just really keeps me running smoothly. So I've always got pro projects on the go and I've been working the last few months on recycling, reinventing my pop-up, um, my hearts for the pop-up love shop and reusing all the materials, yeah. bits and pieces I've found. And uh, I've recently been doing a, a training called The Art of Allowing, which you might have seen some pictures of mm -hmm. uh, female faces, and this is working with the divine feminine, mm -hmm. which uh, uh, is also, a, 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 as part of this uh, growing and using love as a baseline, I, I, one can't help but get more involved in the bigger picture of what life is all about. And I have become very much involved with the Divine Feminine and what part she plays in, I say my life, but in our lives. And because of the patriarchal view on Christianity, she's been pushed to the side a great deal. And I feel more than anything now that this feminine, this feminine spirit, this feminine mother, this feminine energy needs to come back into our world to save us. We're going to be lost otherwise. We're going to be lost. We need the feminine. That's very strong within me. So I, I, I've always been against the patriarchal system. It's been, was drummed into me as a child. And uh, I, I've always felt that it wasn't the right way. It wasn't the right, and I've had, always had a good feeling for Jesus, Christ, but I, the, the, it, I couldn't find it with all the, the, the bad things that had been done under the name of Christianity. It didn't sit right with me. And I've recently become involved with the Grail story, the Holy Grail. And this is a, a whole new understanding for me of looking at uh, where I am today and what I am doing and on a deeper level with my work is that it's bringing in something about this Grail mystery, which is to be to the, a new look at what Christ means in today's world and for doing that I have to take aside all the my thoughts on what I've learnt from my Christian upbringing and to have a new view opening my heart to the the divine feminine because Christ and the divine feminine these they go together they go together that the peace and love compassion uh, and kind love and kindness are particular. You find it in Buddhism, right? but the main place I, I forget what some of the Bible and all or, uh, the things that have been done in the name of Christ. But the teachings of Christ are, I guess, the most important of bringing this uh, uh, of um, of, of love, yeah, uh, and compassion and kindness. And trying to, I mean, the Bible is a, a, probably the most esoteric book out and you can't read it from today's mind. You have to understand a little bit about it from the time in which it was written and have a good understanding of esoteric knowledge, which, you know, we don't have. I mean, I've been doing quite a bit of research myself just lately. Uh, having become involved with anthroposophy, which is a Rudolf Steiner based, and so uh, although I have, uh, I meet challenges within what his philosophy is, Steiner's philosophy, I must say that he does offer some very good insights into uh, uh, the human condition and what we as human beings 
should be striving for. Today we are so based in materialistic viewpoint and we've lost this idea that we are actually spiritual beings. And uh, I think he's trying, yeah, was to 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 see that, that that as human beings that we are we're more spiritual. We're more spiritual, and to do that, we have to really know ourselves. We really have to know ourselves, and it's there's so much that's in this world today that takes away from that. It's a job in itself. Okay. The thing is, is it's unseen. What we do as, as artists, it's not just me who's involved in working on, with this type of energy. We're, it, we're working with it, but it's basically unseen. But it's not unseen because it's out in the spiritual world. So it's doing something on some level of bringing uh, uh, harmony and balance in to this very... Oh, a uh, crazy world. And I, I, I believe we, we have to believe that. Yeah? Otherwise, what's the point of it? What's the point of it? Yeah. All we need is love. I think so. All we need is love. With flowers, you have to go and pick them. You have to pick them and keep them clean. You can deadhead them, you get rid of them. And then new growth comes, like this lavender I picked three times and it's still growing. This here, look, it's got fresh flowers on it. Well, because I picked it. Most people, they let it come and they leave it like that and it's dead for them. But when you cut it back, cut it back, cut it back, up it comes again and this is what life's about. Yeah, cut it back and new growth. I, that, that's another reason why I think art and gardening are really good complementary uh, occupations or attitudes, the attitudes that we have in our gardens, how we deal with them, run over into life. I'd be lost without my garden. I love it. I love it. <laughs> This is my winter garden. Well, I guess it started off, you see, in the 1980s, having come from a, a, a dysfunctional family background and dropped out as such and not having any education. I discovered quite by chance uh, that this uh, assertiveness, assertiveness for women, and it was one of those <gasps> moments I, I was given a book we were reading a book together at this small women's group I went to and it said the first line was something that we we have a choice we have a choice in life and this was something that really hit me so so deeply because I'd just been blown like a leaf on the wind up until this point blown this way and that way and not thinking I have a choice and I decided there and then that I wanted to go more into this assertiveness stuff. So I went on some courses, I went up to London because they weren't everywhere. I lived in Kent, had to go up to London. That was something really big for me. Go up to London, do these courses. Then I would have been about 20, 28, 29. And um, at the end of doing the course for myself, I thought that oh, this is just so valuable for women. We really need this. We really, really need this. And I'm sort of, I came from, born in 1952, so it's following the war. And I, I believe that women at that time had um, took on the sins of the fathers as such, that uh, our fathers had been involved in war, were not able to express their emotions, uh, and they had an awful lot of stuff, chips on their shoulders. And we girls, I guess it was with boys as well, but they expressed it in a different way. Us girls, we grew up in a really sort of um, difficult situation of not valuing ourselves. 
And so this meeting up with assertiveness, and which was to do with uh, self-belief and understanding who you were and being proud of yourself, was a, a, just wonderful. And so I went on a training, a teacher's training, facilitated training to do this. And it, the, I, so I went from being like this old hippie sort of thing, working to cleaning people's houses, working in gardens, uh, to having a profession and working in universities and colleges, working with doctors, nurses, librarians and ordinary, ordinary women, working with anger issues, working with um, effective communication. So this was the beginning of it. And in that time, I came across the Divine Feminine. That was the first time it came in, as it rose in the feministic viewpoint. And so life went on, and I lost my daughter, and I did other things, and moved. Uh, I stopped doing the assertiveness, uh, and then I moved to Norway. I met a, a man who I'd met earlier on in life, and uh, when we re-met, it was instant love, and then I left England and moved to Norway. So life was changing. And then with uh, Facebook, it has a lot of useful information on it, if you use it wisely. And one time I came across this, uh, someone had put a picture up of her working with the art of allowing and the divine feminine. It was another one of those... <gasps> moments in my life as my art has been very much to do abstract with playing with paper with shapes doing pictures of faces was oh I can't do faces that's terrible I, I wasn't working with form and to see this I thought I'm going to do this I'm going to do this and so I immediately signed up for a course and it was wonderful a uh, wonderful course uh, run by a woman called Flora Orbe doing the art of allowing, and I I got so much out of it. And it was another one, as I say, of these ah, ah moments, this is what I want to do, that I took it further and went to do some facilitating, facilitator training in the art of allowing, which was helping other women find themselves through painting. And so this divine, this divine feminine, what is she? She is something that lives in all of us, male and female. She is, uh, 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 she comes in many faces and forms. You can find her throughout mythology, throughout history, Isis, Ishtar, Nut, uh, in all, in all, all of our myths, in the female myths. We were blessed with having wombs, I think on a very simple answer to that. And whether you have children or not is not the issue. The issue is that we have this vessel. We are vessels. We are all vessels. Men are vessels too, but perhaps women are connected more, more easily to this thing of being a vessel of what we hold. And, I mean, we all got our hearts, and our hearts, of course, are, are our biggest vessels that we can all have, and perhaps women are more connected with that part of themselves. It certainly seems, when you look at all these new workshops uh, uh, and places or, or situations where there's, we're going deep into feelings and, and looking at ways of changing, the majority of participants are women, are women. First, the women have got to speak it themselves and speak it from their own power, not from books, not from uh, theoretically. They have to speak it from their own power. And when, oh, as I say that, I get little tingles coming up. Oh, yeah, well, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and when we can do that authentically, then it's going to spread. It's going to spread. And men, I do believe that men are taking uh, a, a little step back and looking more into themselves because, I mean, it's not uh, really obvious that that is happening, but it is happening. And the more that women are authentically powerful from within, the more this is going to happen. 
I believe that's the only way it will. But we have to speak our truth, we have to walk our talk. Thank you, Liz, for opening your heart and cultivating a sense of color and awareness. By inviting us along on your soul journey, you enrich our lives and give us a glimpse into how to be a better person.